Twitter gone, the website gone, nothing, yeah. It was just oh me my God. and my five ugly looking ape looking at me. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Chain Debrief Podcast. In today's episode, we'll be talking about NFTs and more specifically, the news of the weekend that famous talk show host Jimmy Fallon is an owner of a board ape. And so I, I think one of the reasons why I thought this um this topic would be very, very fitting is because just over the weekend, uh, Jackie and myself actually minted uh, Terra bots. Uh, and so it's an NFT on the Terra system. Uh, and when I shared it on Instagram stories, because uh, when I actually tweeted the photo, the developer said that it was very rare. So I thought, ah, I'm just going like, to screenshot there and then share it, right? Uh, a lot of people actually DM'd me and said, oh my goodness, how do I get involved? Like, how do I, what's the process even to like, you know, uh, find an NFT project? And, and things like that. So there's a lot of people who are not even in crypto that are interested in the NFT space and I thought what a great way to bring up this topic and to and to talk a little bit about it. Uh, today's episode we want to cover several things, mainly what are some indicators uh, and, and signs of like an interesting or promising NFT project, what are some red flags to avoid and also um, some personal stories uh, that we may have uh, within the realm of NFTs. La. And also if uh, Jackie would like uh, a certain a certain project that he aped into. La. Hey. So we'll <laughs> so um, I think the news of the weekend is that uh, Jimmy Fallon bought a bought a um, he actually admitted this when Beeple was on his uh, was on his talk show and so uh, all the CSIs managed to find that like one week ago he paid two hundred and twenty five thousand US dollars for a bought a yacht club NFT Jackie what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I mean for those in the NFT space, right? Everyone knows that. Uh, bought a uh, BAYC basically right it's like the status the holy grail, the holy grail like. of all NFTs right NFT collectors right um, so for all celebrity if they want to go into uh, you know without without needing to establish their uh, street cred and all those right it's basically to buy a BAYC it's like a digital flex lah you know, you buy you're like okay you know I'm, I'm an NFT collector already and you don't yep. have to do all the work you just have to throw money in because um, they have, I guess they have a lot of money. I think before Jimmy Fallon revealed it on Twitter, like a lot of people on like communities and on Twitter were saying that we are in a NFT bear market almost and like volume was kind of like stagnant, dropping a little bit. And then after he revealed it, like volumes on OpenSea, which is the NFT marketplace, uh, suddenly just shot up again. I think we've also seen that when like Steph Curry like bought his NFT, um, also when Snoop Dogg did it, like a lot of these celebrities aping in almost acts as a catalyst for a lot of people to say, okay, wait a minute, this is not a niche product anymore. This is not on the fringe. Like, this is something, this is a movement almost. Yeah, so he single-handedly, like, you know, brought back the whole NFT uh, bull market because before he revealed that he's the owner of BAYC, the ape, right? Um, you know, the floor price of all NFT projects have got, went down. The reason was because everyone was expecting that ETH um, will continue to go up. So what they wanted to do, all the NFT collectors, right? What they wanted to do is basically to hold more ETH so that when the value of ETH go up, right? And then they can buy more um, JPEGs, lah, basically. Lah. I think at one point it was like 31 ETH. The cheapest BAYC was 31 ETH. And yeah. 31 ETH is how much? $120,000? Yep, still a lot uh, of money. No, but... $130,000, $140,000. And then after... After he revealed that he owned a BAYC, right? And then now it's like 42 ETH already. He went up by 30 plus percent already. So he single-handedly like brought back the bull market, which is not bad. So I guess like moving on from that, right? Like I think a question that a lot of non-crypto natives who, who, who are interested in the space want to know like, is NFTs like, is it a fad? Is it a trend? Is it like a legitimate investment option? Or, uh, you know, or is it just really about the art? Like, like like or is it a flex like you said like where is this going because i think it's still a very confusing and new space for like quite a lot of people um i feel like there's just too many nfts right now if you look at um uh, on ethereum blockchain alone right there are probably every other day there's like two three four new projects that launch every month there's probably like almost like 100 projects that are being launched and um it's just very hard to stand out from all the collection right now uh so the for, for me right my first ever mint was basically a cat it's called a cat shit crazy uh nft it's really sound cat shit crazy <laughs> la. <laughs> you know at that point it was like four or five months ago um 
And then all, all the NFTs are very expensive, right? So when I came across that project, I was like, oh my god, I can buy at original price? You know, I always thought that, uh, you know, I, ha- I can only buy from someone else. You know, minting was like, yep. whoa, you know, you, can, you must be selected or very early to be able to mint, right? Yep. So at that point, I'm like, wow. So when I saw the project, it's launched, there were like 10,000 cats uh, uh, available for minting. I'm like, oh my god, I need to jump into this shit, right? And I straight away, without doing any research, Oh my goodness. Without doing any research, right? I just went in, I just mint like I minted 10. What a fucking idiot. Oh shit. <laughs> no, it's damn stupid. <laughs> wow, and I can't think Wait, of it. How, how much was it per, per uh, I know I spent almost half an Eve. Oh my oh, god. But at that point, it was, but Eve was about like $2,000. So it's still not bad. Okay, so I spent like $1,000. Okay. Because oh my god. I know that, you know, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money already. I just need to sell one and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to be rich already. Like, you know, I'm, I feel so smart, right? Yeah. Minted 10 Now The floor price Is zero oh <laughs> Like no God. one Yeah It's just hidden In all the So there's no community There's no roadmap There's nothing So that was my first mint My second mint <laughs> wow, My second mint right Even More jalat So uh, It was I think the next two days Or something I saw that uh, There was a 8 punk collection Okay. Confirm make money one what? To, to yeah, your... Punks and then the eight. Yeah, because it's the yeah. number one, the, the crypto punks, and then number two is the eight, right? So they, they, they mix it together. How bad can it be? How it's Like bad? the recipe for success. Exactly. I minted five. <laughs> How much each? <laughs> I think point zero point zero four or something. So it became 0.2 okay. or something. So not so bad. Then, one week later, rock pool. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so basically right so like the the twitter all gone ah. the twitter gone the website gone nothing yeah it was just oh me my God. and my five ugly looking ape looking at me <laughs> <laughs> for 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 context for those who don't know what a rug pull is it's basically when like because you, you basically pay the developers to min right yeah. and so it, if they suddenly just take all the cash and then disappear like you can't even trace them anymore like all their socials disappear i think the mark of a good uh, uh, you know, NFT project, you know, the community, how strong they are. Yeah. Number two, uh, the roadmap, you mm. know, whether they are like utilities behind it and whatnot. Number three, the team behind it. Yeah. Uh, I like projects that are being docs. Docs mm. means that you know who are the teams behind it. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, 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 uh, it means that they're committed to make this work. Okay. Uh, and then obviously, number four, uh, what I tell myself is you have to love the JPEG lah. Because the art, la. the art la, you know, if number one, two, three, GG, right? You still have your image and, and you can use as your <laughs> profile pic, la, you know? So you are, to answer your question, uh, is this for anyone, everyone? Um, NFT will be here to stay. I really believe that, uh, you know, there's a saying that, that goes, that, that, that says that uh, in the next one or two years, anything that can be tokenized, that can be made into an NFT will be an NFT, right? Yeah. So obviously right now we're in the early stage of NFT, which is the profile picture NFT, which is PFP NFT, right? And then there are actually like uh, music NFT that I'm looking into right now. Um, and then there's like fashion NFT also. And then there's like financial NFTs. Um, so everything that can be tokenized will be tokenized. So NFT is definitely here to stay. Uh, but whether or not you should, you know, jump into it, uh, There's I just want to say there's so many projects out there. Right now, what I'm doing is basically I I want to buy a uh, blue chip NFT law and okay. those that I think won't die until very badly one like, you know. So um, but it also cost a lot more to begin. Cost with. a lot more like. Yeah, cost a lot more. Yeah. Um. So I think like when when you talk about blue chips, right? Mm. I think ninety nine percent of the population will probably not be comfortable with like dropping you know like five or six figures of like us dollars yeah. onto a jpeg right so if someone were to enter the nft space right now is there particular projects um or like that you would recommend them to look into or maybe particular networks would you recommend them to look into ethereum or there's you know there's also solana and uh, terra that has like an up and coming like nft scene uh, you have to look at nft from a portfolio perspective how much of your portfolio do you want to allocate to nft Mm. right and it could be you know two percent it could be five percent it could be ten percent if you're very very bullish on it uh personally i think uh, my one is probably about five percent i look at uh nft as like a leverage long for eve 
I don't know whether that, there's, there's saying that says that if you're very bullish on ETH and then um, uh, you can basically buy a blue chip NFT and then it will appreciate in value while you you keep your ETH tight in the NFT itself, right? Yeah. Um, so for... It's, for, it's for, like buying property. La. Like buying property. Yeah, exactly right. For anyone that wants to come in, I guess, uh, uh, you know, for the... There's a few projects that are quite interesting. There was a recent... I think there was a recent launch called Dead Fellas, I think. Like it's probably yes. about two months old. Yeah, Dead Fellas quite interesting. I haven't really uh, dived deep into it, but there's a lot of like... Uh, NFT uh, collectors and influencers they own it but if you're looking at for, for more of, of like blue chips one right so obviously BAYC is the holy grail which is very very expensive and then there's also the uh, cool cats it's quite interesting also uh, but that one also like 6, 7, 8 EVE and then after that there's the doodles uh, also quite popular nowadays uh, yeah. I, just now I checked the floor I think it's about 1, 2 ETH Lesser than 1 ETH 1 mm, There's just too many of them already There's a lot of very interesting uh, projects Someone told me just now There's a baby a Little baby Ape club Oh Yeah, very interesting So the mint price was 0. 0.02 ETH okay. It's selling at 0. 0.4 ETH right now So 20x already um, so that's for Eve, and then for me, uh, I think for you also, we we are looking at other chains, right? Because it's cheaper. Yeah. Um, so a uh, majority of my JPEGs are also in, uh, the Luna ecosystem, the Terra ecosystem. So I have a few, uh, GPs also Galactic Punks, which is the equivalent version of Crypto Punks on, the Terra network, right? And obviously, I mean, there's a lot of projects that we minted together, right? So that's the you know <laughs> Terra Bula, Terra Pinna, and then. Uh, we also minted uh, yesterday. All of us minted the terabots. Terabots, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's more for fun. I feel like they were more for fun and um, enjoy the JPEG la. I feel like NFT makes it very fun. You know, you're in crypto, right? <laughs> Thinking about what to buy, you know, what coin to research into la, Which Ethereum network, which L one, L two la, and then a lot of farms la, a lot of risk la. Very number. It it's very cold. Yeah. Yeah. But NFT funds, yeah. You look look yeah. at the art, then you're like very happy and you're like, hey, I just spent a lot yeah. of money on this JPEG and like. And then you share it with the community. Everyone yeah. like either and laughs with you or gets impressed with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it brings some fun to it. So, yeah. uh, it's not bad, like, I guess. And then hopefully one day one of the collection will explode and cover all of the cost of the other shit <laughs> projects. <laughs> <laughs> that's very that's true. basically that's, <laughs> no. That's essentially it. So like for for for. For the Luna ecosystem, right, I have oh, I have like 30 to 40 JPEGs right now. And then I'm just hoping one of them will explode to cover the cost while I look at my JPEGs every day, la, you know. So speaking of blue chips, right, uh Jackie, I'm just gonna like out you here. Jackie paid about, I don't know, 20,000 USD for a JPEG, which is uh actually like a little brother to the Bot Ape York Club. Which is the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. Uh, do you want to kind of like let us know your rationale <laughs> behind buying such right. an expensive? Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's I think, very, very long already. Okay, so like I mentioned, right, I have zero luck with NFTs. On the ETH blockchain, right, right now, I'm not going to buy any new NFTs anymore. Unless I can mint it and unless it's a great project. Like the other day, I minted a uh, Cypher because... Uh, it's a great team line. I think there's a small chance it will blow up. Okay, yep. but I'm not gonna mint any if uh, NFTs anymore, if I can lah. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to collect uh blue chips so that I will not die so badly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, the other day I was looking at uh, mutant ape. So mutant ape is basically uh uh bought apes. Uh, you need to buy a serum a NFT. Combined with the bot ape, it will mutate into a new mutated uh, MAYC. La. So uh, I was looking at the floor, floor price and it dropped all the way down to 3.1 ETH. Okay, to give things, uh, to give some context, right? The serum cost about 3 ETH last time. I think I haven't fact checked, but I said it's cost, cost about 3 to 4 ETH. So the min price then technically is 3 ETH. So it dropped all the way near to min price, eh? Okay, and then every day I was looking at the min price. Wow, so low already, 3.1, 3.1, then it went back up. Okay, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Every single day, I saw the floor price going up and up and up. Then I'm like, oh my god, this is running away. 
Okay, and then at at 3.8, I'm like, I need to do something about it. Right? So 3.1 to 3.8, eh? that's like what almost 20 plus percent in like two or three days only, right? So I had some, I told you, right, I had some ETH uh, that I bought in 2017, um, and then it was in cold storage. And then I took it out, and then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take like uh, four plus ETH to buy a mutant name. And so I bought it, and then the next day, it just went all the way up. All the way today is at 6.6 ETH already. And actually I have I have offers ready to buy my eight uh five ETH plus already. So technically I make money already la, like one ETH plus already la. Uh but I'm not gonna sell it la. So I mean <laughs> Uh, the, the, I mean, yeah, the logic is basically like, like, I was looking at the ape and then I'm like, mm, this is really quite nice. And then after that, uh, the floor price is rising very, very fast. And like, you know, when, when Jimmy Fallon dropped that BAYC thing, right? The whole MAYC actually exploded, not BAYC, because BAYC is actually very expensive. But MAYC, the mutant ape, right? Actually, this is only like, uh, relatively, uh, it's like 10 times cheaper than BAYC. Okay, so then I'm thinking, right, cannot be everyone can buy, you know, it is the, everyone would, cannot be everyone buy the BAYC, man, then actually all the volume goes to BAYC, then, I, yeah, I should have bought more, basically. <laughs> but I, I think what's quite interesting was that you shared with me a Twitter thread that kind of explained why they were bullish on a MAYC, and was because, if I'm not mistaken, I'm paraphrasing, but it's because right now, if you look at the price of a- MAYC compared to BAYC, mm. it is like maybe 16% of the price or something at that, at that point of time, like 16 or 20%. But then based on the utility, because if you're bought it, uh, your club like holder, you get all these different like access to like, you know, whether it's events or like these little, little things, right? Um, Obviously, BAYC holders will get priority of that, but there will also be allocation for MAYC holders and that, ratio of difference in term of benefits is like maybe 30% or 35%. So then to that person, right, it was undervalued still because if you're paying 16% of the cost of a BAYC for 35% of the benefits, it's it was like a no-brainer for him almost. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's a bit technical uh, for yeah, a, a lot of technical, people. A bit technical. But it, it seems so sound that when I saw that and then Jackie also was like messaging me like, dude, you, have you gotta to buy, buy You it, have to it, buy already. The train is running over already. And then I waited and waited and waited and I was just thinking like, how am I supposed to part with five figures for JPEG? Like, I, how do I explain this to my fiance? How do I explain it to my family? Yeah. Like, if I suddenly, the money, right? Like, it's, like you say, it's illiquid, right? How do I do this? And then I remember there was one night uh, like on Saturday, right? I was like, Oh my god, I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. And then when I went and checked about the price again, right, it, it went up ran already. Yeah, it, went up it ran too far already. Yeah. yeah. So I missed the boat, I regret it. I wanted to buy some more, yeah. Like I wanted to buy it when the floor was like five point something. Yeah. I'm like, I told my wife also, look, this is this is it already. Like I like, cannot be, you know, there's only ten thousand apes only. And then, then the second tier, which is the wannabe like me, right? There's like 16,000 of them at like like five times or eight times cheaper the cost. This one won't die until very bad one, you know? Then I'm like, yeah. and I didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, so um, I would have made money straight away the next morning, but uh, whatever lah. So I actually just checked. The floor price is now 5.87. Oh, let's go. Oh my goodness. Let's faster wrap up this podcast so that we can buy some mutant apes. Yes, yeah. no, like, uh, I, think, I think if it drops, uh, I think it's overextended a bit already because yeah. in a matter of like two, three days, it, it doubled the price. I think it's slightly overextended. Uh, so I have a BAYC uh, friend slash uh, uh, someone in the space. Like, he tell me like, he say the the price overextend already. He say don't 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 fall more into it. Then I'm like, mm. yeah, it, it's just a bit ridiculous right now, lah. I feel like it will draw back. It will. I think if it falls back to like four point five below four point five, right? You really should look into it. Okay. Because the okay. mid price again is around three to three ish. I think. Yeah. So, okay. I think one day until very badly, huh? Yeah. I shall get some Ethereum ready. Correct. So if you have cold storage Ethereum, right? Yeah. That you park there, not doing anything, one right? I would go and buy M Y C. Okay, which is which is what okay. I did lah, basically lah. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, we, we talked about some like positive like indications of like a project, right? But what are some very clear cut? Especially you're you're so experienced in like rug pulls at this moment, <laughs> like rug pull pro, right? Like what are some red flags that people should avoid whenever oh, they are researching like, NFT about projects? It. <laughs> okay, very very simple. So a lot of NFT projects, right? 
they're trying to build a community. What it means is you have to go to their Discord to like uh, fight for whitelist and all this kind of stuff, right? To find out about their community, you have access to the team, right? What you can do is you can ask them hard questions and see whether they dodge or not. So there was a recent project. So I was very early in the community because they have a lot of hype, a lot of followers. Uh, I went in, then I kept on asking them, you know, who's the team behind it? What's the plan for this? And when can we see this? Is there a session, an AMA session? Uh, I asked all those questions. They always dodge, always, always dodge. And I just feel like this is just off. La. I just want to know where I'm parking my money, ma. you know what I mean? Importantly also, um, you know on OpenSea, you can sometimes see that some projects have a verified tick. Mm. Sometimes that doesn't necessarily no. guarantee. Yeah, so the I think the requirement for the blue tick, right? Very low. Because you just needed to prove that, you know, you're a legit uh, project and then after that you have X amount of volume, they'll give you yeah. the blue tick already. Um, so I think you don't don't trust the blue tick one. Uh. It doesn't mean that you get a blue tick bro- project, you'll make money on, on, on NFT. I feel like 99% of the projects that you get in will lose money. Another thing about NFT, right, is that NFTs are very, very illiquid. It doesn't mean that today you want to part or you want to sell your NFT, right? You can straight away sell at the floor price already. No, 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 no. Yeah, so... It, it could take a week almost. Yeah. Or more, yeah. Hey guys, so thanks so much for watching this episode of the ChainDB Podcast. We talked about NFTs, what are some things that you should look out for, red flags to avoid, and also why did Jimmy Fallon buy into Bot Ape Yacht Club. Um, we also talked about the NFT community that we're in, and so uh, do check out for that. Um, there's a link below. It's uh, Chain Debrief's NFT Telegram community where we talk about all the latest NFT drops, um, whether we're going to be minting it or not, and then we'll all share it inside and have a good laugh um, if it's like cheap. Uh, and so do check that out. Uh, and yeah, I think that's all that we have for today. Also, of course, a uh, disclaimer, everything that we discussed about today, uh, please do your own research. Don't just like aim into everything just because we mentioned. Please don't put your entire life savings into it. Um, it should just be part of your portfolio and most important thing, you should enjoy the art. Uh, so that's all that we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.